So I'm talking about generating video with recurrent neural networks. Um, this is something I did by accident um, a few years ago, and it, it worked. Um, so I used to be an artist, I, or I used to make my little bit of money being an artist. Um, and the way I do it is I write a proposal for some crazy artwork um, that involves computers and things, and um, then I'd get funding for it, and then I'd muck around doing whatever I wanted and try and make something that vaguely resembled um, what I proposed. And this is, uh, this is talking about one of those cases. Um, the last one, the one that actually completely ruined my um, me financially and um, in terms of credibility with the Arts Council in New Zealand. So that this led to me getting a job, which has got me here. So what I proposed is um, there'd be a computer that listened to people um, coming towards the art gallery and it would use speech um, were coming towards the room that the, the show was in and it would use speech recognition to uh, work out what we were talking about and then it would um, generate video um, that was related to what they were talking about and then they'd go into the room and they would um, see the video and they wouldn't know it would, they wouldn't know that um, the machine was being sneaky and they just think that the, the work was really topical. They think it was, you know, right on talking about the, the right kind of things, and they think it was. Uh, they think it was a really clever artist, knowing um, what people were talking about, and um, they'd go away and never know that they were tricked. This is this was in um, 2011. I had to say, I didn't know that people were going to actually, like a few years later, install things like that in their houses. But that's um, a different question. Um, so it kind of looked like this. There's a um, a microphone outside the room, and there's a projection inside, and now there's a TV aerial, because the way it was going to um, generate video related to the words is it was going to um, watch TV and read the subtitles, uh, the, the subtitles were there, at least sometimes, and um, it would associate the, the, something to do with the video um, you know, qualities of the video with particular words that were, were coincided with that, those pictures. And then um, when it came to generate a new video, it would just try and make something that matched um, what it had learned about what words go with what video. And I didn't know how that was going to work. And that was the um, exciting thing, so I had no idea. Um, so the, the whole point was I was going to spend my whole time fiddling around trying to associate video, uh, or trying to generate video based on these words. Um, and I was going to use pocket strengths and um, the, the, the TV and, <coughs> but what I found out is that New Zealand English didn't work with um, open source speech recognition. <laughs> um, yes. If any of you can understand me, I can tell that you're not an open source speech recognition. <laughs> um, actually, it's better now, but Mozilla's made one that works a lot better. Um, and then the video pictures, as I was saying, it was going to read the subtitles, but just as um, I was starting, they turned off the analog broadcast in New Zealand. And the analog broadcast actually had digital text, whereas the digital broadcast is still digital text. Well, the, the, the subtitles are an image. It's like a um, you know bitmap um, image that just goes on top. So I need to use OCR to read what the, the words were, and and um, it was not it's not impossible, but it was getting more complicated. Um, and the video creation, I still didn't know how I was going to do that. So anyway, um, the speed. Investigating speech recognition, I was kind of looking into what you need to do. And basically what you need to do is get um, thousands of people to 
to, to um, read sentences. You need, you need hundreds of hours of, of speech, of exact transcriptions of um, well, you need sentences with an exact transcription of what they said. So any disfluency or um, ums or ahs or, or any kind of um, misstarts in a, in a sentence, um, it needs to have that included or else that sentence needs to be extensive to chuck out. And it's a hard problem. You need to be um, an expert in kind of crowdsourcing things and I'm not that kind of person. Um, or else you need not to know. Um, but anyway, so I, it was really fun. I was um, having a good time reading about how this was done, and then I started reading about recurrent neural networks, which had were then being used for language modeling, which is another part of speech recognition that I won't get into. Um, yep, now this slide, I'm not going to explain it very much. Um, there are lots of um, tutorials and stuff about recurrent neural networks on the internet nowadays. Um, and usually people are using a thing called a long short term memory um, now, but back in 2012 and then they, people weren't really using that, well they weren't using them at all, um, but um, this guy Thomas Nikolov from the Czech Republic, um, he used a recurrent neural network for a language one like this old, old fashioned thing from the 80s and it just has kind of one <coughs> layer and you just do some, it's just you multiply things together and add them up and squish it a bit and, and remember the state. It just remembers the state from each time step on the next one. I'm going to skip over it because um, if, you, if, you have, if you want me to talk more about it, you can ask if I have time. But um, the, um, the simplified view is it kind of looks like this. So there's a state um, at each time step, you get a new input and you and you mixes the input with the, the input mixes it into the state and spits out some output and it kind of keeps going on. Now, anyway, so I was thinking about these things and um, the art gallery um, were asking when was this artwork going to turn up and I had no speech recognition, no enabled video, no algorithm. And, um, but I was interested in recurrent neural networks, so. Um, so I came up with this idea, where um, you've got your, your video coming in, and you basically feed the video into the recurrent neural network with the audio. Because now, because I promised that there'd be some association between audio and video and stuff, I needed the audio in there. Um, and it, it spits out a, it's meant to learn it looks at some, um, frames in order and it's meant to predict the next frame from the, the one the current one and the and state is its um, summary of the entire history until that point it will in practice on like, you know, the last few frames and it, so it's kind of got a sense of how the video moves from the um, from the, that's what it's meant to learn. And you did, the way you train it is you just give it a, um, the input and you give it the, and you show the output and you see what it creates and you kind of you punish it for how wrong it is, how much it's different from the output. And it's, it's, it's machine learning. Um, and then, so that's the training process. And then, the, then when it's in the gallery, that sound from the microphone would come in and it would mix in with the, the previous frame that it had generated. So it's kind of dreaming over its own um, output, but with the sound from the room kind of being get, steering what it's doing. Um, so the first problem with that is um, video has and you people know, there are millions of pixels, um, and there are, um, well, there's three planes and stuff like that, and um, the, to, to train that much um, 
to train something with millions of inputs and millions of outputs, you actually need millions of examples. Otherwise, I feel like if you imagine that, you know, pixel number 10,002, um, if, you're if you're training it individually, um, you need gazillions of um, instances um, because it, it can't really learn that they the relationships between them um, particularly well. Oh, I didn't explain that. Um, so this is the problem because I, I had a few weeks and I didn't have any training data. And um, um, also, the, I didn't have a recurrent neural network and, I, and it wouldn't have run on my um, core 2 machine that I had. So, um, Um, what I ended up doing is making a dodgy assumption that um, if you if you look at close up on a on a video, it's the same as the way that well, for, the, I was assumed that video had um, like a fractal similarity. Um, if you look at it, there's plenty of a scene, it'll move in a similar way to the entire scene, which is maybe true of, of the natural world, but not really. But um, it's not true of video, because video is you know, guided by people. The, the overall scene is trying to show you something that somebody wants you to see, whereas um, little parts of it aren't like that. Um, and um, the trick I had is that the, you'd, it would have a, um, a three by four, four by three input, and it would come out with a um, eight by six, uh, and um, and it would learn. Um, it learned with. It had little spots all over the, over the video at different scales. So it would kind of jump about, look at one part for a while, and then jump to another one, so that in real time, like it could learn. Um, it could watch one video and it could learn 20 different things from it because it looked at 20 different points in it. So it was like multiplying the, um, the, the corpus that I had of video. Um, and it took the audio. Um, and so then the thing that I did to make, because um, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mind an 8 by 6 video, I quite like that kind of look. But um, I would have thought it would be more interesting to make it try and add more detail. So um, it kind of recursively went into, it would make the first, um, I'm sorry, I, I really want to jump over there, but I know you won't hear me. Um, the, the, the first four by three chain, it also looks, it kind of it smears out the edges so that you get the, um, the outside, the extensor image to, to um, fill in these extra nodes. I didn't really explain that. So around the, the 4 by 3 there's the, another layer of nodes around it. And then it kind of looks in each quarter and um, make generates video from that and then it goes in and into each quarter of that and it keeps on going down. And um, so it, it recursively goes down to put to add detail using the outer layer that the previous um, thing. And, and now on this on this laptop, I can go seven things deep. On the on my on the show, it actually went in five deep. Um, and that's just how you, this is about taking features out of the audio, but you don't really care about that. Um, if it was an audio conference. Or, um, and so there's that. Uh, I use G-Streamer. Um, there's basically, it looks like a plugin that is uh, um, a video filter and an audio filter at the same time. And in training, it, um, you just feed the audio in. I mean, the video source, which has the audio and video. And um, you take it out and put it into what they call 
fake things, I think. I can't remember. You, think, you just chuck away what you get out, and it just learns um, state. And then when it comes to the show, you do this. You um, feed... I'm not sure if that's actually accurate. Anyway. Um, so, anyway, the original picture looked at that. And now because this audio wasn't, there was no delay between um, when, what you said and what it did. It was more like a, more like a work where um, you'd say something and the video would change straight away, right? Because it's instant. So the microphone came into the room. Otherwise, you'd just have the effect of what, um, what someone else in the building was saying. But now, so I got to um, Dunedin, the town where the show was meant to be. And the art gallery there is a huge concrete building. And um, there was no TV reception in there. So um, the, the, the TV came off. And then the other problem I had, um, I can't, well, I didn't bring a microphone. I think I thought that they would provide a microphone. But they didn't. <laughs> so it was more like that. <laughs> So I'd done a whole lot of work um, doing this thing, synchronising the video and audio. In fact, I think I'd done a whole lot of work I'm making a slide about how I did it, but I didn't really do that slide even. So, but anyway, so it ended up just being the video generation, and then there was this demo. Which is watching a video, and trying to learn the qualities of the video and generate video in the same style. Now, in the few minutes I'm going to show it to you, it's not going to learn anything. But um, that's all right because it wouldn't actually learn that much in the long term. It might be something interesting like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so... Anyway, so this show went on for um, a few months. I went back to my hometown. Um, and it turned out after a while that the um, hard drive died. So the picture froze, actually. So. <laughs> but it, it looked all right. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was in a, it's a picture on a wall, a better protected than this one. And... Um, People didn't mind. So, um, so then a little while later, um, I, I was asked to make another work for another gallery. Okay, that's good. Um, and I, and I, so I, you know, I've been using the recovery on networks and stuff, and I had the idea of using it uh, to, to drive a cellular automata, which um, I'm not going to explain either. It's, you've probably seen life, Conway's life, where little bits fly around the screen. It's like a, um, you know, spy state thing. And there are other ones that people use. But um, I just have, you know, I, you know, each pixel, if it's got its own recurrent neural network, its own internal space, and it looks at its immediate neighbours and generates the next step, step. Then that would, that, and it would learn from watching video and it would do something interesting too. So I, so I tried that, and it looks more like this. Um, and it also, it, um, if I left it for longer, it would do more different things. But um, at the moment, it's really just trying to get its head around. Starting up. Um, and so, this is another way you can do it. Um, now, if I was going to do this thing now, this was all six years ago, five years ago, something, um, I would have a different generator on the top level generating the scene, and then things like the cellular automata filling out the details. Um, and I'd use one bit neural, neural networks, which is the thing I'm interested in at the moment, but that's a different question. But actually, I, what I'd do is I'd muck around for the last minute again, and, um, 
and you know they're not the same or or different, but um, they're lots of fun and um, sort of a failure. Um, so the code is C G Scrambler. Um, it's quite fast because um, the activation function I use doesn't uh, and it doesn't use transcendental maxim. And a lot of the times you have to multiply things by zero or one when there's actually shortcuts for that. Um, mm -hmm. And I just make everything completely aligned for what was for ECC in, in those days. Um, and just make using these macros to, I mean, this is pretty simple stuff if you're into it, I guess. Um, just t telling GCC that there's never going to be a time it's going to step to get to the fast button and then slow down and just can go through. And that can, you know, generate video on a crappy old computer. And then, how much time now? Okay. Um, anyway, so I ran out of money doing all this. Um, I, I went back to Wellington and I, um, I got a job using my recurrent neural network from this to identify um, birds and nighttime more because I think find kiwis and more hawks, the bird calls, and um, then identifying the language that people were speaking on the radio because um, the radio stations are funded to speak Maori in particular percentage, some of them are, and um, if they're not speaking enough, they need the funding cut. And um, so the current neural network that ran with these artworks is actually being used still to identify what language is being spoken. And it's, it's good for that because I made it all fast and small, and so it can do 1,500 um, radio stations on one um, computer. Um, and also I used it to identify anonymous authors. That's a different question. This is the, the screenshot from that. Um, radio thing. Each each color band is a different language, or or some of, it, some of them are music, and some of them are Maori, and some are English. Um, and that's all I'm going to say.